so today we are going to discuss uh, general characters of fungi so understanding or knowing about the general characters will be very very important uh, so that uh, it will be very easy uh, to manage the fungal disease not only for fungal disease but also for other disease so knowing about the general characters for every pathogen will be very very important and four more steps and uh, myself nh shankar reddy i'm doing first year phd plant pathology from anavala university so we will see the few of the uh, general characters of, of fungi so fungi are eukaryotic eukaryote means eu means true karyon means nucleus so it contains a true nucleus and a chlorophyll as a chlorophyll means it absence of chlorophyll it does not contain any chlorophyll so it can't able to prepare their own food material and it is a non motile it can't able to motile or it can't able to um, or transmit by me, i mean it doesn't contains any flagella so which means uh, and then next one is a unicellular or multicellular unicellular or multicellular so few of the fungi are unicellular organisms contains only one one type of cells or one cells whereas the multicellular organisms also present in fungi so the fungi mainly can reproduce by means of asexual or sexual spores here the spores play a major role in reproduction that may be asexual spores or asexual spores so the type of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition heterotrophic nutrition and absorbed heterotrophic which means as i, as I already told you that is a chlorophyllous which means they can't able to prepare their own food material and absorptive type of nutrition can mainly absorbed in uh, uh, fungi though uh, coming to the cell wall so well defined cell wall can be observed in fungi mostly the fungal cell wall is made up of chitin it's a very very important and uh, this type of questions can may be asked in jrf or srf so the cell wall type in for most of the plant pathogenic fungi cell wall is made up of chitin so whereas except to who my quota in history itself i already told you except to who my quota all almost all plant pathogenic fungal cell wall is made up of chitin whereas who my quota cell wall is made up of cellulose so cellulose is the chief component in who my quota cell wall coming to the sexuality as i already told you that is the fungi can may reproduce by means of sexual and asexual reproduction methods coming to the habitat so it is a ubiquitous ubiquitous means which is found everywhere in the world wherever you go you may go america you may go somewhere else wherever you go the fungi may be found as a saprobe saprobe which means uh, which is found in dead and decay organic matter so sub fungi can act as a saprobe and also can act as a symbiont symbionts which means they can live together in a beneficial or a uh, uh, beneficial relationships so the fungi may be a parasites are hyper parasites so parasites which means they dependent on other organism then they, they get the nutrition from the uh, uh, dependent organism so that is called the parasites are hyper parasites which act as a parasite on the parasite so whereas parasite is getting nutrition from the host whereas hyper parasite will get the nutrition from the parasite so this uh, uh, this uh, this one is called as hyper parasites which act as a parasites on the parasite coming to the uh, few of the things next are uh, uh, they reproduce sexually by, by means of spores i already told you fungi has two types of reproduction that is sexual and asexual reproduction sexual reproduction by means of spores asexual reproduction by means of budding or fragmentation so asexual reproduction this type of asexual reproduction can also observed in fungi so i already told you the fungi lack chlorophyll hence they can't able to perform photosynthesis the fungi also produce sex hormones which play a major role in a sexual reproduction what are the fungal sex hormones we will uh, discuss in later uh, later classes so the majority of the fungi belongs to uh, belongs to us mycota nearly 70% of the fungi belongs to ascomycota next one is followed by basidiomycota and zygomycota so the biggest fungal phylum is ascomycota which almost comprises of 70% of the fungi so so far 1.5 lakh fungal species have been discovered so far so few of the ever coming to the example mushrooms molds and yeast these are the examples these are the uh, few of the general characters of fungi so i don't want to uh, explain too much because you will, you will get confused so other general characters which includes thallus so thallus is a vegetative or somatic body of fungus somatic body or entire body of fungus so thallus is a vegetative or somatic body of fungus so thallus is divided into two that is holocarpic thallus and eucarpic thallus which means holo means entire so the entire thallus at maturity entire thallus what is thallus i already told you vegetative or somatic body of fungus when thallus is matured the entire somatic body or vegetative body is converted into single or several reproductive organs 
so when the when the thallus will mature in the holocarpic type the entire thallus converted into single or several reproductive organs so this type of thallus can be observed in example old feedium old feedium and syncytrium so syncytrium and old feedium this type of thallus can be seen that is called holocarpic holocarpic means entire thallus is converted into single or several reproductive organs that is called holocarpic the second one is eucarpic thallus eucarpic thallus means when the thallus is differentiated at the time of reproduction into vegetative part and reproductive part whereas holo means entire body is converted into singular several reproductive parts whereas eucarpic which means the thallus is differentiated into vegetative part are under reproductive part so different into two parts that is vegetative and reproductive so this type of uh, thallus can be observed in pythium and pythopsora so thallus is a vegetative or somatic body of fungus is very very important the next one is hyphae or hyphae so hyphae is a microscopic or thread like filamentous structure on the right side uh, the white cottony growth in the right side we can see here it is a microscopic thread like structure if you see it it look like a thread like structure filamentous it is a thread like filamentous structure it is called hyphae what is hyphae if you ask what is hyphae write the definition of hyphae so hyphae is a microscopic thread like filamentous structure that is called hyphae so hyphae is divided into two that is septate hyphae or aseptate hyphae the name itself contains septate hyphae on the on the lower side we can see, you can see here septate hyphae is otherwise called as cenocytic hyphae cenocytic hyphae or non septate hyphae which doesn't contains any septa or absence of cross walls so hyphae doesn't contains any cross walls or septa is called cenocytic hyphae or aseptate hyphae or non septate hyphae it has a different names don't get confused cenotypic hyphae is otherwise called as aseptate hyphae aseptate means it doesn't contains any septa on the diagram itself we can see in here which septate means the hyphae which contains septa you can see here septa septa can be here we can see septa here that is septate hyphae septate means presence of cross walls or septa aseptate means absence of cross walls ab aseptate hyphae is otherwise called as cenocytic hyphae or non septate hyphae or aseptate hyphae so the next one is a mycelium what is mycelium so a group of hyphae what i told you what is hyphae hyphae is a thread like filamentous structure so here mycelium is a group of hyphae collectively called as mycelium a group of hyphae collectively called as mycelium that is mycelium so what is rhizoid 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 which means it anchoring or absorbing organ of fungi that is especially rhizoid type can be observed in rhizophus so diagrammatic representation will be there in next slide so what is rhizoid rhizoid is a anchoring or absorbing organ of fungus so this type of rhizoids can be observed in rhizophus that is a fungi rhizophus is a fungi so the next one what are all the somatic structures somatic structures which are produced by the fungi what are all the somatic structures which are all the produced by fungi coming to this somatic structures will be helpful for the fungi for the survival or or for getting the nutrients so many th functions will be uh, uh, there uh, for this uh, somatic structures which is produced by the fungi so the, we can see one by one what are the somatic structure as i already told you rhizoids what is the rhizoids it is a hair like structure or a root like structure which anchors the fungi you can on the right side diagrammatic representation we can see here here see rhizoids rhizoids are hair like structures or root like structures which anchors the fungi and also helpful to absorb the nutrients so this is the main function of rhizoids it is the one of the somatic structure which is produced by the fungi and the jrf and few, in the few of the exams they will ask what will be the function and uh, what will be the function of uh, rhizoids so rhizoids anchors and as well as absorb the nutrients so rhizoids can mainly observed in rhizophus type of fungi rhizophus is a fungi so these are all the fungi don't worry about uh, uh, all those things because once we get into this uh, classification it will be very easy to understand so coming to the next somatic structure which is produced by fungi is apressorium apressorium on the right side second diagram we can see apressorium what is apressorium it's a very simple apressorium is a attachment or anchoring organ of fungi so very simple if the spore will come and contact with the leaf surface it immediately produce apressorium because if the heavy winds what will happens the drift of may will happen so that 
to prevent the drift of what will the what the fungi will do aprosori they produce aprosorium from the spore this is the spore you can see here this is the spore once we get in contact with the leaf after that it produce aprosorium you can see here in the right side aprosorium aprosorium is a attachment or anchoring organ it anchors the spore so that it after attachment what will happen the aprosorium will produce a penetration hype after attachment it will produce a penetration hype so that the nutrients can be absorbed by a specialized structure that structure that i am going to tell you so this aprosorium will pro mostly produced by obligate pa uh, uh, parasite that is rust powdery mildews uh, so uh, rust and uh, powdery mildews are obligate parasites obligate parasites means it requires a living host without living host the uh, fungi can't able to survive so here aprosorium simply attachment or anchoring organ of fungi is called aprosorium it's very important this uh, already told you that rhizoid anchoring organ or nutrient absorbing organ this uh, uh, this circle within this circle we can see so why i mentioned this bread mostly uh, we all we have seen in uh, home itself uh, the, a few of the times the uh, the bread get uh, 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 get contaminated with uh, rhizophus that uh, green color molds that is a rhizophus if we can observe on the black color mold that is aspergillus so this type of uh, 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 molds can be observed on breads so if you want to do an experiment you just sprinkle a, a few drops of water within two or three days you will get this fungus especially in this rainy seasons so the second structure is astorium that i already told you after the spore it produce aprosorium aprosorium is attachment or nutrient absorbing organ that is aprosorium the second one is hostorium hostorium is a nutrient absorbing organ aprosorium is a attachment organ whereas hostorium is a nutrient absorbing organ you can see here after hyphae it get into the fung uh, plant cells this is, you can finger like structures we can see here uh, that is Astoria. Astoria. What will be the function of Astoria? The function of Astoria is a nutrient absorbing organ. It absorbs the nutrients that is required by the fungal spore, so that only the fungal can uh, generate more and more number of spores, so that uh, the plant uh, uh, this is spread can be occurs. So the function of Aprosorium is attachment organ. Whereas the function of Astoria is a nutrient absorbing organ, very very important nutrient absorbing organ. So this type of structures can be observed in erudinales, erysivales, and perennosporous. This is a group of fungi that I will tell you later. So then hypal traps. Hypal traps are very simple. So these traps will capture the nematodes which are present in the soil. So few of the uh, fungi which can produce hypal traps. Best example, Dactylaria can, uh, uh, candida. So I, I I mentioned few of the fungi which having uh, which produce the fungal uh, hypal traps which can trap the nematodes present in the soil in uh, in uh, root regions. So Dactylaria candida, Arthropotrysis rodesta, and uh, Menacros uh, Menacrosporium. Uh, this type of fungi will produce hypal traps which can. Uh, uh, trap the nematodes or which can uh, predate or kill the uh, nematodes which is present in the soil. So uh, those are all the general characters of fungi. Now we will see the hyphal modifications in fungi or mycelial aggregations in fungi. So the mycelium become organized into loosely or compact woven tissues is called plectenchyma. So what is the definition of mycelium? A mass of hyphae constitute to form mycelium. Here. Uh, uh, this loosely or compact woven tissues is called as plectenchyma. If you see the diagrams, you can easily understand. So here this plectenchyma is uh, uh, basically designed into two types. That is a prosenchyma and pseudoparenchyma. Prosenchyma and pseudoparenchyma. Here prosenchyma is a loosely woven tissues which are individu individually hyperli more or less parallel. Simply very simple. Uh, it's like uh, we are arranging sticks one by one, one by one, one by one like that. So simply loosely woven tissues which are individually hyphae lie more or less parallelly one by one parallelly one by one to each other that is called prosenchyma so if you see diagram you can understand easily so the next one is pseudoparenchyma pseudoparenchyma which means it consists of which, which consists of a loosely packed or more or less isodiametric or vowel cells it is very important it consists of isodiametric or vowel cells which are resembles like parenchyma in a higher plants. So the pseudoparenchyma cells due to contains a oval cells. So those resembles like parenchyma in a higher plants. So we can see the diagrams in the next slide. Uh, we can see the prosenchyma cell loosely woven tissues which are uh, which are which lies parallel to one another. The A, the A. then B1 is oval shaped isodiametric shapes. 
uh, we can see in B. So these are the different types of fungal tissues. So about sclerosium and rhizomops we can discuss in next. So now we will see the somatic or reproductive structures produced by the fungi. The first one is stromata. Stromata is a compact mass of tissues. So it is a compact mass of tissues. So this stromatic structure is like a mattress. So it it's, it's look like a mattress on which fructifications are formed. So the first one is not that much important. You can you may skip it. The second one is Schlerosia. It's a very very important. There is a chance to ask in exams like JRF, SRF like this. So Schlerosia is a restring structure or restring body which is produced by the pathogens. So which is produced by the pathogens. So this Schlerosia is made up of pseudoparenchymatous tissues. Schlerosia is a restring structure or restring body produced by the pathogenic fungi. This is made up of pseudoparenchymatous tissues. Pseudoparenchymatous tissues. So this type of Schlerosia can be produced by the members of Schlerotinia, Claviceps and Rhizoctonia. These are the fungi. So this fungi will produce Schlerotinia, Schlerosia as a reproductive structure or somatic structure under unfavorable conditions. So under unfavorable conditions, this type of fungi will produce Schlerosia as a resting structure. Whenever the favorable environmental conditions will occur, the Schlerosia can germinate and it can produce fungi. So this Schlerosia contains enormous amount of food reserve material, enormous amount of food reserve material, especially it contains mannitol, trehalose, glycogen, lipids. These are the food materials. So these food materials are sufficient enough to survive for longer periods, more than 10 years, 20 years. More than more than that, few of the times or few of the occasions. So the very simple Schlerosia is a restring structure which is produced by the pathogenic fungi, the members of Schlerotinia claviceps. It is made up of pseudoparenchymata cells. It contains enormous amount of food reserve materials that will be helpful for the long term survival. The next one is a mycelial stands. Very simple. The aggregation of parallel or relative undifferentiated hypae. What will happen here? Few of the undifferentiated hypae are hypae aggregate or collectively to form mycelial strands on the right side we can see the diagrammatic representation and the upper one are uh, the black color mustard shaped things are schlerosia the schlerosia actually represents like this the second one is mycelial strands so already told you the aggregation of undifferentiated hyphae is a mycelial strand so it is produced by the members of basidiomycotina ascomycotina and deuteromycotina so now deuteromycotina is involved in ascomycota so which is the largest uh, group of fungi uh, next one is rhizomops. These are the root like aggregations on each and every side slide on the right side diagrammatic representation will be there so that it will be very easy to understand what I am uh, uh, trying to tell you. So rhizomops are root like aggregations of fiber. Very simple. These are the root like aggregations. This is also somatic uh, 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 reproductive body which is produced by the fungi. So each and every uh, fungi will produce different types of uh, somatic or reproductive bodies that I am, uh, I am explaining uh, from. Uh, so this is rhizomops, a root like aggregation of hyphae is called rhizomops. So this type of reproductive or somatic structures which is produced by the fungi Armillariella mella. It is a mushroom, okay? Initial, basically it is a mushroom. So how this rhizomops are formed? The few of the hyphal aggregations are together, nearly 4000 hyphal aggregations are together to form this rhizomops. Very simple, rhizomops is a root like aggregation of hyphae. Nearly 4000 hyphal aggregations are required to form rhizomops. So rhizomops are especially produced by the fungi or mushroom, especially Armillariella mella. It is a very 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 important, Armillariella mella is considered as honey mushroom or bioilluminescence mushroom honey mushroom or bioilluminescence mushroom why it is called as honey mushroom if you see the mushroom on the gills on the upper side it shows like a very smooth or honey like substances we can see on the upper side or gills so that's why so not gills on the upper side on the cap on the cap so that's why it is called as honey fungus why it is called as bioilluminescence fungi which means if you look at this fungi or if you see this fungi at night times it produces or emits light that's why it's called as a bioilluminescence fungi. It's a very, very important. Uh, few of the exams, there is a chance, not a chance, is a compulsory question. Most of the uh, times I have seen the, uh, from past three or four years, most of the size, this question will be definitely there. So, and, uh, this is rhizomops, about rhizomops. Uh, then we will see the important thing in fungi that is a very, very important thing in a reproduction in fungi. Reproduction in fungi. So, for each and every organism or 
animal whatever the reproduction is very very important to form a new individuals or to maintain their balance so reproduction which plays a main role in maintaining the individuals so here uh, the fungi uh, we can see vegetative asexual and sexual type of reproduction we can observe in fungi so what are all the types of reproduction we see in fungi that is vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction we can see in fungi the first one we will see one by one that is a vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction does not involve in the union of nuclei or no sexual I mean, no sex cells can be produced due to the vegetative reproduction what will happen there is no much generation or variation can be seen from one individual to another individual so here it does not involve fusion or union of any nuclei that is a vegetative reproduction so the few of the types what are the types that comes under vegetative reproduction that is fragmentation fragmentation which means the fungal hyphae which a bit are broken into small pieces which are detached from the hyphae and they can develop into the individual colonies that is called fragmentation very simple a breaking of a bit a breaking of hyphae let, let me tell you an example if you take a pen if you cut into pieces by using a scissor so that the small pieces are small bits is due to fragmentation a cutting or breaking into small pieces that is fragmentation the next one is budding budding uh, we will know very well about budding the small outgrowth which are produced on any side that may be our right side or left side whatever the side the small outgrowth will be produced from the tooth growth the nucleus from the mother cell will divided into equally so that the bud will get separated from the mother cell and it can develop into the own uh, their own cell so a bud will be produced and they can detached from the mother cell and they can develop into the own daughter cell that is called budding and then is fission fission is splitting into half splitting into half so this type of fission can we can mostly we can see in bacteria but fission type of uh, uh, reproduction can also seen in fungi so splitting of cell into two daughter cells so one cell can be split into two daughter cells while splitting the genetic material which is present in the uh, this particular cell will divided equally so each and every cell will get equal amount of uh, nucleus whatever the cellular materials which are present in the cell so that is a uh, 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 sorry vegetative type of reproduction now we will see asexual reproduction so fungi mainly reproduce by means of asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction is a very very important now we will get into asexual reproduction so production of asexual spores very simple spore is a reproductive structure so spore is very very important the history in history we have seen that uh, michelle told that spore is the reproductive unit of fungi if the fungi want to reproduce spore is a must and should so the spore is the reproductive unit of fungi so here there are two major kinds of asexual reproduction that we can observe in fungi the first one is sporangiospores the first first of all we have to observe what is sporangiospore we have to know the definition what is sporangiospore so sporangiospore is a very on the right side you can see the diagram it is a stalk or tube like structure where it bears the sporangium on head which bears the sporangium on head this long stalk like structure is sporangiopore sporangiospore which bears the sporangium on the upper surface on the head it, it, we can see the sporangium the sporangiospores are produced from the sporangium very simple what is sporangium asexual reproduction by means of two types the first one is sporangiospores from the what is sporangiospore this long stalk like structure above this long stalk like on the right side diagram i'm telling on the long stalk like structure on the upper side on the on the head side it produces sporangium inside the sporangium sporangiospores are produced that is sporangiospores sporangiospores are of two types that is a planospores and juice spores inside this sporangium these two are produced there which one is what are they a planospores and juice spores the first one is a planospores i don't want to explain too much i will tell you in a simple way a plano means non motile the the spores can't motile that is called a planospores they having a typical cell wall around them so a planospores are non motile spores it contains a typical cell wall around them so a planospores are non motile spore very very important planospores means motile spores a planospores are non motile spores so this type of uh, uh, asexual spores can be observed in zygomycotina group of fungi the second one is zoospores so zoospores are motile spores here 
juice spores also produced from the sporangium spores inside the sporangium they, whereas uh, juice spores are produced but the juice spores are motile spores they can contains flagella locomotory organ they can contains flagella so where this juice spores contains do not contain sorry where the juice spores do not contains are lacks a cell wall so does not contains any cell wall whereas aplonospores contains cell wall but it lack no fly it contains no flagella because it's non motile so juice spores do not contains any cell wall but it is motile it contains flagella so this type of uh, uh, asexual spores can be observed on mast mastigomycotes on the right side we can see the juice spores we can see the juice spores juice spores are motile it contains two flagella so flagella types we can uh, see later the second one is conidia or conidiospore the first one is sporangiospore asexual spores are first one is sporangiospore the second one is conidia most of the plant pathogenic fungi pr produce conidia as asexual spore most of the plant pathogenic fungi whatever that comes uh, under ascomycota as a basidiomycota most of the fungi will produce conidia as asexual spores conidia or conidiospores okay they are the asexual reprodu uh, reproductive structures which are mainly produced by the members of ascomycotina and deuteromycotina so now deuteromycotina is involved in ascomycotina so ascomycota so this conidia are of two types arthrospores and chlamydiospores arthrospores which means the fungi uh, the fungal hyphae which are break down or which are get separated into small fragments or bits due to fragmentation due to fragmentation very simple already what is fragmentation they are cut into small pieces or bits here what I, what is arthrospores arthrospores uh, arthrospores are the type of spores where they are get separated or break down from the hyphae through the process of fragmentation it's almost like fragmentation but there is a little change here arthrospores so this separated bits or separated spores get developed into the individual hype or individual conidia so this type of uh, uh, we can see in endomyces so this arthrospores are otherwise called as idea it's a very very important arthrospores are otherwise called as idea this we can see in endomyces endomyces uh, uh, group so the second one is chlamydospores chlamydospores are resting spores as like as well as like as like of sclerotia chlamydospores are also like resting spores it contains very thick cell wall as like of sclerotia it contains a thick cell wall that also helpful for the uh, fungi to survive in unfavorable environmental conditions this chlamydospores are especially produced by the members of fusarium very 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 important fusarium produced diaspores as a asexual spores chlamydospores as a asexual spores so it contains enormous amount of food reserve materials in the form of glycogen or oil that will be helpful for the uh, chlamydospores to survive in a long period so over long period so these are all the some of the diagrams the fission a is fission budding fragmentation aplonospores juice spores so diagrammatic representation will be there in each and every slide so now we will see asexual fruiting bodies produced by the fungi so what are all the asexual fruiting bodies so what is this fruiting body which means so from this fruiting body only all these structures all these spores are produced the fruiting body is the structure where the spores are produced or generated that is a fruiting body so what are all the fruiting bodies which are produced by the fungus we will see the, the first one is pycnidium pycnidium sporadacium acerula or acerula cinnamon on the right side diagrammatic representation will be there so the first we will see i will tell you in a simple way what is pycnidium you can you can see on the d right side d pycnidium is a simply hollow or flask shaped globose fruiting body if you see the diagram it will be very easy it is a hollow flask shaped fruiting body it is a hollow flask shaped fruiting body with a narrow circular mouth a mouth is a very narrow and circular so that is a pycnidium so pycnidium is a hollow flask shaped globose fruiting body with a narrow circular mouth that is a d representation of picture that is a d that is pycnidium so example macrophomina fasciolina so macrophomina fasciolina will produce asexual fruiting body as pycnidium so it is a chance to ask in exams so give me an example of uh, pycnidium type of producing fungi that is a macrophomina fasciolina and they will ask some of the uh, some other options so the macrophomina fasciolina not only macrophomina fasciolina but so many fungi also produce pycnidium as asexual spores but i am mentioning the a few of the important things only here 
so the next one is sporadium sporadium is a b and you can on the right side diagrammatic representation that is a b sporadium is a hemi spherical or barrel shaped compound conidiophore from where the spores are or conidia are produced on the c and the b diagram you can see that is a barrel shaped hemi spherical or barrel shaped compound conidiophore and uh, we can see as uh, example very very important fusarium spizarium produced from i mean fusarium produces asexual fruiting body as sporadium sporadium it's a very very important the third one is acervulae Di diagrammatic representation so we can see acervulae acervulae is a sacker shaped a depressed pseudo parenchymatous aggregation so it is a sacker shaped so if you can't uh, uh, pronounce it or if you can't able to understand all those things very, you can write in a simple way Uh, Pycnid is a hollow, hollow flask-shaped fruiting body. Sporodium is a hemispherical fruiting body. Acervulae is a sacker-shaped depressed fruiting body. And then uh, we can say acervulae is a sacker-shaped depressed fruiting body. And the last one is cinema. Cinema. It is a loose aggregation of branched or unbranched conidiophores. The conidiophores are all are branched together. Like as I told you that uh, if you take four or five pins in a palm, uh, the the aggregation, this type of aggregation we can see in cinema. That is a loose aggregation of branched or unbranched conidiophore. That is cinema diagrammatic representation. So cinema type can be produced by ceratocystis and graphium, whereas acervulae can be produced by colotrichum and pestilosia. Uh, these are all the asexual fruiting bodies which are produced by the fungi. Pycnidium is a hollow flask shaped. Example microfilm na fascia lena. Sporodium is a hemispherical barrel shaped structure produced by the fusarium. The acervulae is a sacker shaped fruiting body which is produced by colotrichum and pestilosia. And the last one is cinema. Cinema. So loose aggregation of branched and unbranched conidiospore which is produced by ceratocystis and graphi. Now we will see the flagella. So flagella is a, we all will know about flagella is a locomotion organ or locomotory organ. So what are the types of flagella we can see in uh, uh, fungi? So most of the fungi can't produce flagella. So few of the fungal groups only can produce flagella that we will discuss here. Flagella is a small hair-like structure. So it is a small hair-like structure. Which is helpful for the locomotion. It is only helpful for the locomotion. So here, uh, for your for our deep understanding or simple understanding, I have given some of the diagrammatic representation. Anterior. So anterior, you can see in the anterior is called epistocot. Anterior means upside. We, you can you can see the diagram anterior, which means upside. Upside. In secro in acronyms, it is called epistocot. Epistocot means anterior. Anterior na. Anterior means upside. So posterior. Posterior is called opistocant. Posterior means downside. Anterior means upside. Posterior means downside. The types of flagella in fungi. What are the types? Which means whiplash. Whiplash is acronymatic. Whiplash is called acronymatic. So whiplash type. You can see in diagram it will be very easy. So in whiplash type of flagella, whiplash which means which contains no hair or absence of hair. It doesn't contains any hair. Whiplash without hair. You can see the diagram. Whiplash without hair. Tin cell is called pantonematic. Whip cell is called whiplash is called acronematic. Whereas tin cell is called pantonematic. Flagella with hair. Whiplash means without hair. Tin cell means with hair. Now we will recall it once again. Anterior upside, posterior downside. Whiplash without hair. Tin cell with hair. Now we will see. Here you can see the lower diagrams. Posterior whiplash. Posterior means downside. Whiplash means without hair. Posterior whiplash. Posterior downside. Whiplash without hair. So posterior whiplash type of flagella can be observed in Chytridiomycetes group of fungi. So don't uh, don't bother about this. What is this Chytridiomycetes? Hypochytridiomycetes. Uh, Hypochytridiomycetes. So these are all the classification of fungi. We will get once we will get into classification, it will be easy to understand that. Now we will see. That is posterior means downside. Whiplash means without hair. That is Chytridiomycetes. Anterior tinsel. Anterior means upside. Tinsel means with hairs that we can see in hypochytridiomycetes. So the third one is biflagella. It contains two flagella, two flagella with the anterior whiplash. One is small set, the second one is big set. The biflagella means two flagella. Biflagella means two flagella with the anterior whiplash. Anterior whiplash means whiplash without hair. It contains two flagella. One is short flagella, one is long flagella. And it contains no hair. This type of flagella can be seen in Plasmodioporomycetes. Plasmodioporomycetes is a, uh, uh, you know, a protozoa group of fungi. So the last one is biflagellate with anterior tin cell and posterior whiplash. These are biflagellate with anterior tin cell and posterior. Anterior tin cell means with hair. Whiplash means without hair. 
uh, now we will see the sexual reproduction so sexual reproduction uh, will be very very important in fungi not only for fungi but also uh, for every species which is exist in the uh, ex exist in the planet sexual reproduction is very very important because sexual reproduction only can create variations or ch changes from one generation to another generation whereas vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction will generate but the frequency rate is very very less just 0.5 percent from one generation to another generation whereas sexual reproduction can generate almost 95 to 100 percent variation from one generation to another generation so the sexual reproduction will be very very essential here what are the types of sexual reproduction fungi if you get into this that there are three types of sexual reproduction that we, that we can see in fungi that is plasmogamy karyogamy and meiosis i don't want to uh, 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 take too much so i will explain in a simple way plasmogamy union of two protoplasts in a in a single cell that is plasmogamy karyogamy karyon means nucleus gamy means fusion the fusion of two nucleus so where it takes place the organ where it takes place is called zoogites so karyogamy takes place in zoogites meiosis is a reduction di division uh, where the chromosome number is reduced into half so this meiosis takes place in gonadotropins these are the types of sexual reproduction that is plasmogamy karyogamy and meiosis plasmogamy means union of two protoplasts karyogamy means fusion of two opposite uh, nuclei meiosis means reduction division now we will see one by one the first one is plasmogamy the first one is plasmogamy so here uh, the plasmogamy in, uh, here there are some types in plasmogamy the first in the type what are the types of plasmogamy the first one is gametogamy gametogamy is otherwise called as planogametic copulation or planogametic copulation gametangy means which means fusion of morphologically or physiologically different gametes so here in gametongy uh, gametogamy fusion of morphological and uh, uh, physiologically different gametes are fused what are all the types comes under gametogamy the first one is isogamy anisogamy heterogamy iso means same the fusion of isogametes of same size and shape and the diagram can be seen here isogamy fusion of same size and same shape fusion of gametes of same size and shape is called isogamy iso means same gamy means fusion there is a fusion of same size and shape of cells that is called isogamy so example olfidium and syncytium so this in this fungi isogamy type of uh, plasmogamy can be observed the second one is anisogamy an ani an, an means not same gamy fusion the fusion of morphologically similar but they are differ in their size then second diagram we can see what is the first gamy isogamy means fusion of gametes which are same size and shape here anisogamy fusion of gametes which are morphologically similar but differ in their size which are different in their size in the in the second diagram we can see in here that is uh, uh, example allomycin and blastocladials we can see anisogamy type of plasmogamy the third one is heterogamy heterogamy is otherwise called as oogamy so what is oogamy the fusion of motile male cell on the on the third picture we can see the male cell the small cell the male cell which contains flagella whereas the big cell that is the non motile cell so here the heterogamy or oogamy which means fusion of non motile cell with male motile cell here the male cell is motile the fusion of motile male cells with non motile female cells that is called heterogamy or oogamy this is uh, gametogamy or gameta uh, gam planogametic the second one is gametangiogamy or gametangial contact the name itself is the gametangial contact here the copulation between morphologically or physiologically different differentiated gametangia so on the right side diagram we can see the small one is called anthurium that is male reproductive organ whereas the big uh, egg shaped or oval shaped structure is called oogonium that is female reproductive structure here there is a small fertilization tube is formed in between male and female gametangium so due to this fertilization tube the male gametangium passes from male to female gametangium so fertilization tube is the first the cells are come in contact the fertilization tube is formed from male gametangium the male gametangium passes from for, from male gametes male gametangium passes from male to female through fertilization tube so this type of uh, uh, plasmogamy can be observed in albugo pythium and pythoptera so now the third type is gametangy or gametangial copulation 
gametangia or gametangial copulation here very simple the fusion of entire content of two gametangia here the entire content of two gametangia can be fused so entire content can be fused here so what are the types comes uh, in uh, that gametangia that is halogamy direct fusion anisogametangial pop co uh, population copulation actually sorry there's a spelling mistake pop cop copulation so hologamy all content of one gametangium passes into another gametangium here gametangium is directly passed from one gamete sorry uh, gametangium passes into another gametangium here not gametes are passed gametangium is directly passed from one to another this type of hologamy can be observed in chytrids and yeast so direct fusion the fusion of two morphologically similar gametangia and become in a single cell where two uh, gamete uh, morphologically similar gametangia are fused they become single cell so uh, let me tell you an example if you uh, two things can be fused they become a single uh, a single thing like that so here two morphologically similar gametangia are fused to form into a single cell so here this type of uh, plasmogamy can be observed in mucor and rhizopus the third one is anisogametangial copulation copulation so fusion bit unequal gametangia that is anisogametangia the name itself it is there aniso not same gametangial population the fusion between unequal gametangia that is uh, that we can see in mucorrhils the fourth one is spermatization so in this methods of sexual reproduction we can mainly observe in rust uh, rust is an obligate parasite so uh, when we get into the uh, life cycle or uh, uh, in detail description of rust you can understand uh, uh, what are all the things are uh, obligate natures and all those things so now we will see what is spermatization type of plasmogamy so is spermatization is a, a sexual reproduction that can observed especially in rust only so is rust, rust to produce and you can see you can observe the diagram on the right side you can observe the diagram it produce on the upper side tiny uninucleate non motile spore like structures on the upper side it produce uninucleate up, uh, structures is called spermatia these structures are called spermatia they form a flask shaped structure is called spermagonia this form a flask shaped structure is called spermagonia on the right side we can see so here a tiny uninucleate non motile structures are male sexual uh, male sex cells are produced that is called spermatia they form a flask a flask shaped structure or organ is called spermagonia on the right side picture you can see spermagonia which are developed on the upper side of leaf upper side of leaf so it is very very important on the lower side asiospores are produced we can see on uh, rust so what will happen this spermatia this spermatia will uh, transfer from one leaf to another leaf through air through insects also there is a chance of insects also so through insects are air it can transfer from one leaf to another leaf if it is get if it is get uh, if it get on another leaf what will happen the uh, like pollination here the fertilization occurs very simple it's like a pollination process so this type of spermatization can be seen paxinia graminis triticae and podospora these are almost rust so the last one is somatogamy somatogamy means fusion of vegetative cells or somatic cells very simple fusion of vegetative or somatic cells is called somatogamy here the thing is they are not sexually differentiated into hypha or conidia so here the somatogamy type of plasmogamy fusion of vegetative or somatic cells will are fused which are not sexually differentiated so this somatogamy uh, type of plasmogamy is also known as pseudo mixes pseudo mixes on the right side diagrammatic representation can be seen these are all the types of plasmogamy the next one is karyogamy and meiosis that already explained on the uh, first uh, the first uh, itself so that is the karyogamy means fusion of nuclei and then meiosis means that is a reduction division so coming to the diagrammatic representation of a sexual reproduction fungi isogamy and isogamy these are all the things which are mentioned at the end of the slides